both teams are just kind of like coming back into things and trying to see what they can make happen. We're gonna get a look at Cloud9 again, so that's very cool. Seeing a couple of early glimpses. This is gonna be against FaZe, quite obviously. And again on Mirage, so Cloud9 a chance to uh, maybe take a break between those maps and see if they can learn or adapt anything to actually take the victory here. But I, I can't help but imagine what Yanko would be like if they lose to Cloud9. Brand new roster four days in, I think that would be, that would be a frust frustrating day at the office. Yeah, we may not want to find out. Guardian going to pick up an early kill. He was actually looking amazing earlier on train with the AWP. And what about again, Daps with a couple of good kills in return. And just like that, it is looking at least a little bit doable here for Cloud9. Oh. The pistol Rain, who is a beast with the pistol, going to be taking a couple of kills and looking for more. He's got just an almost unmatched talent for playing pistol rounds. I, I mean, just for that value alone is, is really worth it to have in there. Tenzo, though, who's been waking people up to his own style, getting one in return. Neo sneaking in to get the kill now with the defuse kit smoke on top. He's going to try and sit inside of it and somehow Daps hitting the shot right through. Yeah, finds him with a first bullet, a decent attempt, and you can understand why, even though it's a winnable one-on-one, -on -one, you know, the, the smoke is such a powerful thing, especially with a kit, so... Fair play and a nice recovery after Rain almost steals that away. The, these are, those were incredible shots from Rain. I like this from Daps, though, because we've seen a lot of teams, like, start to utilize this, this idea of playing retake on the B bomb site. And if you have mid-presence, you can get a quick flank. You know, Nico was already playing towards underpass. He could come yes. up those stairs very quickly. And Daps was already well prepared for that adjustment. So, Cloud9 pinning up, uh, picking up the pistol in spite of the fact that it was looking like Rain was about to pull some of his usual tricks. He has to be, I think, one of the highest rated pistol players in the world, isn't he? Like in pistol rounds? I, didn't, I, never, I haven't even checked, but I just have to assume he's in the top three or something. Certainly one of those guys who has had his has stretches where it just seems he's, he's unbeatable with pistols. That's right. I mean, he's had that with pretty much every weapon except for the AWP. Rain just a very, very cool player to watch. Neo is patiently waiting this attack it's going to be coming any moment all five players are here for cloud nine and here starts the utility neo now swinging out misses the first couple he does manage it can't get anything more though so cloud nine into the bomb site and with that kill it should be two zero should be sort of an opportunity when you're in that corner to to one shot a couple of people but not this time and now scout cc mp9 might be worth just trying to save that and fight in the next round as opposed to throwing too much away to try and get exit kills. You know, maybe the CC, you could justify that. Well, you still have the scout on Guardian, and uh, we know he yeah. can do some pretty crazy things, especially with a sniper rifle, so give that another chance, and obviously see, see what you can get in the next round. So no reason to really go for this. I feel like he's been making, like, uh, like some sort of a slow comeback himself this year. Guardian? Yeah. Okay. And it's, like, been after, been, after he's been missing for a while. I really, I was, I've, I was really feeling depressed for a while watching Guardian play because Crush, you knew what he could do. Right. And then it's like, and the excuse kept being, and I mean, maybe that even was like a reasonable excuse. Like, yeah, but he's, you know, to beat that Guardian, you have to outperform Rain, Nico. Uh, I mean, like, th there's so much there, right? So, you, and all of my story, I mean, you, you, so you could even, f f you know, say, yeah, you can understand why that might not be possible, but still. I get I get bothered by this phase lineup for, for a whole different reason. And it's mostly because at various times over like the past year, I've been ready to like pull the plug on my faith and their, their ability yeah. to accomplish things. And then the next tournament comes in and Olaf plays like twice as good as he's played in like six months. So and then Rain is doing it as well. And then Guardian, yeah, and then I'm like, oh, actually, I changed my mind. If we're gonna get this, then, I mean, this it could be amazing if we're gonna get these kinds of performances, but it never, like, fully, it hasn't really clicked yet and been, been a consistent thing, so... Frustrating team for me, because I, I would like to see them playing so much better. They are like the, uh... You get, like, one month for free, but then you have to cancel your subscription and you forget. Yeah, you have to give your credit card information for yeah. the free subscription, and then it just keeps charging, and you're like, oh yeah, I did sign up for that. And it turns out, if you don't cancel it, you're, like, you're automatically on board for a year. You didn't right. know about that. So. And every month it goes up by like two dollars. Yeah, and then right when that year rolls around, you want to cancel again. Now good stuff's happening. You're like, I'll keep it around, you know, a little bit longer. That's phase apparently. Automatic <laughs> uh, getting a couple of kills there, and Kusta taking down Rain and Guardian with a scout and a decent grenade could have landed him a kill. But again, obviously now we're just talking about exit kills, if at all possible. You know where he is, they're hearing the steps, certainly. And now they've got him boxed in. Yeah, he's not getting out. This is going to be a lost... Oh, I take that back. The smoke might help. 
<laughs> oh, what a shot! Right back into the tracers, just rolls the dice. They come up in his favor. I don't know if he could actually get out, though. They're not hunting him too much. No one's in T-spawn. I think they believe he already crossed over to the B-bomb site, but... Probably, yeah. Yeah, so he's going to have a scout that he can pass over to a teammate. The question is, do, do they just want to straight upgrade it in the next round? Because it looks like he'll be able to afford the AWP. It would make sense to uh, to do it, but at the same time, you know, you could you could gamble it, try and, and build the economy even further if you want to. We'll see what they do. That was a nice shot, though, through the smoke. That was interesting. Didn't look like he was going to survive that really ever. So, they do upgrade Anders. They do get rid of the scout. They actually upgrade in a big way. The classic uh, esports double down. They go immediately into a double up setup. Olaf with one, Guardian with the other. Let's see how that works out. Certainly don't want to be on the receiving end of any kind of a phase double AWP setup. I mean, on train we actually saw Nico AWPing out in the yard and that looked deadly. Like, he really looked like he was hitting a lot of shots with it, so... Nico, I mean, we obviously know one of the best players in the world. He's one of those freakish guys who feels like he can pick up any weapon and have impact yeah. in any situation. So, the double ops have not gotten started just yet. Guardian has his over at the A bomb site, peering down towards mid, peering towards a ramp. Olaf has his back at the van at the B bomb site, keeping an eye on the extremities. And you have the three rifles on Nico, Rain, and Neo that can be very mobile between the two bomb sites. It's actually kind of ridiculous. Both Rain and, and Nico, in a world where Simple is around, both of those players probably at one point would have been the best player in the world. Like, at least would have been very close to Nico for sure, but. It's like simple is just on top of all of that. It's so just, ridiculous. Just barely, just still one step up. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Well, fourth round now. That double AWP not really been tested yet. Rain at the edge, and I can't believe the timing either. Automatic was looking at that the whole time. Now Nico going to pick up a kill just before he burns. That was actually Tens reaching out from beyond the grave with the Molotov to take him down. So Rain Ooh. a little bit too much to handle there as Mixwell. He's going to win the fight with the AK-47, and now it's a three-on-three. Three. Oh, Guardian sees the hand. I think he wanted that shot. Flashbang comes in. He turns away from it, goes for the blind one, trying to stop the plant. But the retake is all hinging on Neo. He's got the long flank at the moment. He's taking his time. This would be a huge kill to find an automatic, but the timing again. Automatic, he spots him out. He knows it's coming. Doesn't need to commit to the fight. Still does a lot of damage. Mixwell going to pick up one more kill. The flick missing and Mixwell with the third one. And now it's all done. Neo will go down to Kooster. And that was, uh, that was a really, really uh, good three on three at the end. And actually, it highlights like the classic problem that we always mention with the double orbs. Retakes. Yeah, retakes are very... They like it. Yeah, they're not easy to make work. And on, on a map like Mirage, like your defense has to hinge on your ability to retake bomb sites. You have to be able to push away from it and come back in. Good kills from Mixwell throughout the round. This was great. First kill for him. Follows it up with a second headshot onto Olaf. And there's those AWPs. You can see them keeping keeping the range, not actually aggressing upon anything. Four to nothing in the favor of Cloud9. Well, you said it already. Yanko probably wouldn't be very excited about losing to uh, to Cloud9 at this stage in the tournament. It's not happening yet, but I'm saying it's trend we're trending in the wrong direction from Yanko's point of view. Yeah, it will be interesting to see if they can recover in this half. The next round, they'll have the full losing bonus and everything they could want. Although, I mean, you can't get much more than a double op. Nico goes for a Hail Mary with the Deagle and is picked off. Very patient T side from Cloud9, and I, I, you can't really criticize them too much. I mean, they were they, they were great in the anti ecos earlier against Phase, not losing a whole lot. I think actually all five members surviving, even against pistol and armor. Yes. Same against some IBR. Didn't notice any uh, disasters occurring on their on their anti ecos. So, all good things so far from Cloud9 in these situations. Yeah, that's. I mean, that even that alone must be somewhat confidence building, just knowing that when we're not making those mistakes, at least. Because uh, that is kind of a common thing, you know. Yeah. You end up losing to, I mean, especially at this this well, level of play. Well, Stunna just had the the conversation with uh, Kassad and, and Naimapat, and they eventually, eventually, or both just said, you know, yeah, our answer ego is kind of kind of sucked. Yeah. <laughs> so, teams, uh, it's not always an easy thing. It's a fine line that you have to ride when you're when going against those pistols. Neo is trying to do some work. He's got Mixwell boxed boxed in, but the longer this takes, the closer Kusa is going to get to helping him out. Neo with a 
a little bit of attempted air control. You know what's weird? Because we do obviously have players like, you know, Simple and Nico that do, that do obviously outrank someone like Neo in global offensive, and I mean, yeah, also outrank players like Forrest. Yeah. But some of those players, like I still sometimes see when Neo and Forrest are playing, like a kind of movement that I actually don't see in any other players. Like it's yeah, so flashes I, I, of like the one point six style. It is so weird, like because. I mean, I'm not saying that that makes up for the fact that the other guys are better or anything, but they're like, how, what is that? Like, wh where is that quality inside of them? Because there's something weird happening there that that is just fun. Like, it's just like the muscle memory, like the memory of how to move that's been ingrained from different versions of Counter-Strike. And that's why, you know, especially when Chad started becoming more prevalent on the analyst desk when he was first getting his start, a lot of his conversation was centered around the pure CSGO players, the pure yeah. global offensive guys that were eventually going to start taking the place in teams. Nice job from Nico. Aggressive push as the smoke fades in connector. Double kill for him. Giving FaZe a huge leg up. Yeah, that's that's a way to get started. Alone in the middle, just taking down Mixwell and Kusta both. And can't quite see tens yet. Trying to figure out a way out of this situation for Cloud9, just looking at the minimap. Everyone is spread. Daps is in Palace. Automatic now going in towards B Halls. Tens just has this position in middle, which he could get destroyed from any number of angles at any one point in time, as you can see here. Yeah, that was like a choice. He could have gambled it and jumped in the window. If someone was waiting, he's definitely dead. Yeah. Or, you know, trying to be silent there, and Nico was just in position for a third kill in the round. Someone could have even pushed Catwalk and just gotten yeah. a free kill as well. Nico's going hunting. He's got four. If he turns and he finds this, this would be the ace. He's done everything so far for his team. I don't think he realizes automatic coming from the underpass. 25 seconds left. He can't win the round. Like, it's just not like, the bomb is all the way top mid. It's not yeah. possible for him to run there, pick up the bomb, and fight his way back into a bomb site. So, let's say save the AK, try and steal what you can. But this will be the first round on the board for FaZe. And that at least is going to probably make, you know, a little bit of a difference here. Oh, He's running for it. Oh, Nico's going to have a chance. He's going to have a chance to get the ace. Is he going to go for it? Two seconds left. Now, automatic spelled out. Not going to give him the opportunity. One more kill to find, and he's got it. That's not bad uh, to, to close that round. Two kills yeah. for automatic, keeps the gun in his hands. I think one reason maybe we don't see the same kind of movement on some of the, you know, on the, some of the CSGO stars is where is that it's not rewarded in the same way in this game, right? Like, yeah. that kind of movement doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense. So maybe that's why. But uh, yeah, here we go. Seventh round now coming up. And FaZe finally picking up one after losing five in a row. So we still need to see a lot more out of them. Like, they need to go on their own streak here. Well, we'll see. Deep smoke. Obviously, you're not going to rely on four initial kills from Nico every single round. Boost over the smoke to look for a push, any kind of information that can be gathered. No aggression from FaZe this time, though. The most is Guardian peering over the smoke and connector. Meanwhile, Kusta and Mixwell slowly working their way to the underpass. Oh, Guardian, he wants to do it. Mixwell is back there, and he just moved just at the wrong time. Mixwell had been waiting there for a long time, and the second he decides, you know what, no one's showing. Oh, wait, it's Guardian. Oh, that's the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> it's that timing, that is so frustrating. Everybody knows that as well, don't they? We've all experienced it at a different point. Holding back plat on B, bot dust 2. Yes. You're like, just, they're not coming. I'm going to unscope. You're well, dead. Kusa's got the op now. See what he's got in store for us. Some kind of utility towards the B bomb site. See if anyone peeks into this. Kusta would love to find a pick. But with this kind of a setup, I can't imagine Neo ever peeking this. He wants them to get real close before he actually goes for it. So I don't think there's a great chance for a pick unless Kusta can hit this shot. That would be the big one. Just narrow miss. And Neo waiting. He had the flashbang prime before for that underhand throw. That's become kind of a classic. Now they're jumping down to the low ground in front. They've completely ignored Neo, and that's a problem. He's going to clean up too very quickly and all of with the follow-up. And that's a flawless round coming out from the phase side. And yeah, that will definitely boost their uh, confidence quite a bit. Absolutely, and boost the money. Yeah, I can now feel a bit more comfortable with the cash flow that they've got coming in behind this investment. Really nice job by Guardian, hunting down that opening kill, and obviously just great with the op. Holding angles, letting people walk into him. Neo was never found. A nice double kill for him. Five to two. Cloud9, if they can get a plant out of this round, they might be able to, to squeak one more buy away before Cloud9, or I mean, excuse me, before, before FaZe takes all the money out of their hands. But they need a plant. Need some kills as well to limit the growth of, of cash currently going into FaZe's coffers. 
Oh, double smoked. Big mistake. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Although they're coming right through and they're going to shut down Ray. Oh, no. Oh, my Lord. He's just took down four people <laughs> in absolutely no time flat. It's Daps alone on the other side. What an absolutely absurd performance here. Now sneaking through on the other side. Daps is waiting. And one more headshot. <laughs> That's going to be the most ridiculous ace for quite a while. Oh, style points for Ray. Style points all day. Shower him with it. The one taps is a disgusting thing through the smoke. He shuts that down before it even begins. Oh, God, it's, this is dumb, isn't it? It's so dirty. <laughs> it's just so clean. Yeah, well, that's, you know. It's not too often you get that fortunate through the smoke. It's just spraying wildly and you get a couple nice headshots. No, not all the time, right? But even the follow-up, like the confidence with the last couple of shots where he's just like, yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna tap this away. It's yeah, fine. it's just that, that last one on Daps. He's like, smoke's clearing, I could I could hold the trigger, or I could just one tap. Yeah. Now Mix while hiding inside. Not able to do much as knee. Oh, okay. We're getting more of this. Alright. Well, phase starting to no longer care about smokes whatsoever. Changes the way you can play the game if smokes just don't matter to your opponents. Yeah, maybe it's like, uh, you know, everyone else is hiring like a sports psychologist or something and they've just hired a Jedi to try and try and help them out. Just, <laughs> that's how they do it. Just death matching with the blast shield down. Yeah. Before got like those like, you know, s sleep goggles or whatever they are on. Can't see anything. Oh, yeah, playing yeah. Counter-Strike anyway. <laughs> well, round has been uh, officially put on pause here. Not sure what the issue is, but... Yeah. Figure it out, and then they will reset it all. Good that it happens before people start taking damage, or we have to, you know, get the admins involved. Yep. So, called early. It's a four-round streak for FaZe. You said they had to go on their own run, and they're doing that. They're doing exactly that. Yeah, I'm very pleased about that. I think that was um, that was needed, was necessary. Or they could have been in a, a weird position. How's the other game going? What's that? Renegades and NRG, is that it? Yeah, the A-Stream update. 5-4 in the favor of NRG on the CT side of Dust2. I'm still I'm still wanting that NRG versus, um, versus Cloud9 game. Why? Just for the story. For the... Eric and Automatic? Stan, no, Stan versus Dabs. Oh, okay, that, that story. Not saying that it has to be like a lot of bad blood, but I just feel like that would be fun. Yeah. Would be cool if we, we got some out of it. They're just all dead too nice, aren't they? Yeah. It's too quiet. We could get uh, Stunner to maybe, you know, drum something up there. Start some sort of battle. Yeah, Stunner's very good at, at stirring the pot. He could he could make some magic happen. Some over there already just trying to get Kassad to admit that he thinks they're better than NRG. Yeah, I, th I think he kind of succeeded. Kind of. There like was a little bit. no real, like, battle for the retort, though, right? It, was, it wasn't, you know, anything from that. It was we just, need more of that. Yeah, we're better. Kusta gonna lead the way up a ramp. He's got the Krieg. The utility is out. It's just Guardian here. I say just Guardian. He's got the AWP and he's just taking blind shots through the smoke. For him, they're not gonna land, but they are close. Narrow misses, very narrow misses. And now as the smoke just starts to clear. Looked like he was creating a gap in that smoke and Kusta's gonna find the opening. Really looked like he was trying to ignore the smoke at that point in time, but it doesn't work out. Nico gonna get a kill just before he goes down to tense and they really they got the right idea, but the wrong angle. And Tense is going to be living through that with the bomb now down for a couple of seconds. And Cloud9 Cloud trying to see if they get it done. I mean, they were down a man just until now. Neo picking up the kill on Cooster, and it's still a three on three. They have no time to go for it, even no. with the kids. I think they just want to take the guns away. It's not working out in their favor either. One player boosted up in towards the window. I think Olaf is going to try and go salvage the AWP that Guardian was... Guardian got taken away from him by Kusta. Olaf on the run right now. One player goes down with the bomb, and Olaf... Oh, he just gets there. That's not bad. That's a good sprint. How many kills does Olaf have? I feel like... One. Uh, one. So... See, I thought I... I, I didn't want to, you know... It was throw a good, one of the bus if I was wrong. It was a good one, though. Is that enough? Just one good... One good kill. Sometimes it's all you need. In ten rounds. <laughs> Doing my best, you know. You don't have to defend him, Moses. Okay. He's a big boy. You know? Oh yeah, it's it's not a great performance from Olaf so far. The one kill was very nice. I'm sure he'll make up for it. 
Six to four in the favor of Cloud9. Kusta again leading the way, this time towards the B bomb site. What just happened to the Molotov on the other side? That was Olaf, and it lands down there. Well, they're rotating away. There's some, I mean, Neo just falls all the way back and Olaf not ready for the fight either. Oh, Neo, that would have been a big win. And so, I don't know how Mixwell won that. What a weird jump as well across. He's got the bomb in hand as well. Super dangerous. Oh, that's a deep Molotov to force Olaf all the way back. And again, they almost have to discuss right now. Do they want to go for this or just save it? I think you have to save. All the smoke and the choke points as well for the next 10 seconds. That one on Catwalk just went up. The only thing that could really happen is if Guardian could open up this flank, but actually, Automat doesn't even need to commit to this fight. He can just back away, but he's going to win it anyways. And now you have to save. Now there's no way you go for this. That was I, a very, that was a very uh, odd defense thrown up there by, by Olaf and Neo. They seemed very, very discombobulated. You like that word? It's a yeah. pretty good word. I do like that word. Um, I am. Um, I've got a very weird spectacle outside of our window. I think I want to take a quick video or picture footage of it. Yeah, just definitely do that. Yeah. While you do that, um, I, I think we should. I, I'll discuss the fact that I think that that failed Molotov that was meant to go into the the hall. I think actually they heard that on the T side. Okay. I just thought, oh, cool. Uh, Molotov missed. Let's go. Yeah. It seemed like that was they were close enough to hear that, and that, that was a bit awkward. I think Neo might have been backing up to throw a nade of his own, like some kind of a set nade to get, to Could get be, that yeah. perfectly smoked off or something. It just it was just the timing of it was all strange. So either fair play, Cloud9, if they pounced on the opportunity, that's a beautiful call to make, and that's that's a really good passing along of information. And for FaZe, you know, just not 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 your best round. That kind of a beginning though. Nico, then Guardian on the follow-up. And they're trying to get back. Don't really want to keep fighting. Guardian also taking a fair bit of damage, but that's a headshot there from Rain right through the box. Mixwell, no chance for a reply. And now Daps and Tens, two versus four, and looks like FaZe is going to be picking up another round. Would be great if they could get up to like six or seven here in the first half. I think that would make a substantial difference for them. And I don't see them coming back in this round. Tens down there, waiting. Ooh. Guardian spotting it out, seeing the hand. He wants to shoot at that hand so bad. Here's a chance. Tens realize he's on top, waiting for the smoke to fade for Daps, but Guardian's well aware of the timing, and he's ready for that all day long. Three steps ahead. One more kill to find. <laughs> Trying to stand up. That is a good way to, uh, to peak an angle. You could do that very quickly sometimes, but... Didn't work out. Uh... Did you see that? You ever see the movie The Jackal? Yeah, I think so. There's that scene where he has him hold out his arm. Oh, yeah. He's trying to show him the gun isn't calibrated properly. Yeah, yeah, that's actually kind of brutal. <laughs> it is, but that's what I was thinking of that whole time. Ten hands just sticking out from behind the wall. With uh, Bruce w Bruce Willis, right? Yes, yes. Brilliant. And I think Richard Gere, isn't it? Yeah. He's the, he's the jackal. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, Nico to go down and a great follow-up. Double kill for Mixwell. Tense there with the AK-47 in the middle and well a leg shot there for all of my step but doesn't really matter here two versus five should be really almost no way for cloud nine to lose this round neo is going to pick up a kill on automatic so quick return there is tense will pick up another one the problem with losing that many players that quick in the round is just everyone trying to pick up the pieces after that and somehow bring your bring phase back into it. You just have no idea where Cloud9 can be. You don't really know numbers. You don't really know what the attack is. So you can't read what the other prong of the attack is. Neo's got one trying to fight for his own survival. He's going to get the follow up on Daps. And actually, he could go for this if he was feeling feeling frisky. It's quite far away, but, you know, I would certainly respect the effort if uh, if he really rests around for it. Now he's got the orb as well, so maybe now you say, actually, in that next round, if we just get one more on the board, make it 9-6 uh, or something like that, that would really that would make a real difference. He is going to go for it. This is very deep into the bomb timer as well. Let's we'll see what he can find. AWP in hand. They've got money as well, so it's not like this is going to hurt a buy if he drops this weapon. Neo going to turn the corner. Deagle out. Do they not hear him? Certainly they heard that. Yeah, they definitely hear the defuse click. That is, uh, yeah, well, who knows what could have happened. Oh, he actually got Mixwell at the end. Yep. So fair play. Count Something that. lost. Yep, chalk it up. Give it to Neo. One more frag on the scoreboard. Fair play. It would have been funny as well if they had uh, missed the timing there and just exited the bomb site way too quickly. 
Not the case, though. Five to eight. Really a very respectable first half yet again here for Cloud9 on the T side of Mirage. And Dio doing... Remember, it was that CT side that they struggled with though, against MIBR. It was, you're That's right. That's the one where they kind of... Well, actually, they had a pretty good streak. They had a pretty solid defense. They just kind of lost, lost control of it at the end. Oh, Nico. Down the middle. Automatic. I think he had a Mac 10 as well. So part of the... Part of the struggle of losing that many players in the last round to, ne to Neo. In spite of winning it. And there's another Mac 10 in play as well on Daps, so... They are in a little bit of trouble here on the Cloud9 side. In spite of winning the round, not feeling too comfortable. They've left 10 alone over at the A side, and everybody else is rotating towards the B bomb site. Mix while holding on to middle just for a minute. Are they going to come back down through on the pass and just try and crunch this mid? I'm not entirely sure. Tens is, I mean, they're giving him a lot of freedom over in Palace. He's starting to peek in and seeing what he can find. There is a timing if rain swings out at the awkward moment. Tens just goes down for free. But it looks like they're trusting the young gun. Tens to try and create something, some kind of opportunity on the other side of the map. And obviously that hasn't panned out. And now this makes this so much more difficult. There's no smokes. There's two Molotovs. There's not a whole lot of options available to Cloud9 other than to try and get in a fight and try and win it. But even none of that is working. Yeah, now they've kind of they lost an angle there. Neo going to be picking up the kill with the M4A1. Does throw it away for an AK-47. Still don't see what many A1 players um, these days. It's faded, faded out of existence. Daps is going to be going down as well, and that is a sixth round of the board for for Phase Clan, and could even be a seventh here. The money not looking great for Cloud9 at all. In fact. Terrible. Yeah, it's awful. It is atrocious. No money to invest. It's going to be one SMG and upgraded pistols. So, I mean, they're going to have to scrap together utility. You have to imagine this is just going to be a set piece. This has got to just be line up, line up the smokes, toss them out, throw the flashbangs over, hope someone catches an awkward flashbang. See what you can create from it, but look at what they're fighting with. Smoke, Molotov, and three flashbangs. Yeah, it's really not great. There's only one call you can make with this kind of a buy. That would be the B bomb site. Yeah. Rush B in the classic. The, the grenades have dissuaded them for a little bit. They're going to follow it up now. Good flashbangs to get down through the low ground, but they're going to line up and actually falling right into that crossfire between Olaf and Neo. And they all get shut down. It's now tense, and he's going to make nothing happen this round. 8 7 in favor of Cloud9 for the first half. That is still pretty good uh, for the T side of Mirage. We'll see how it goes in the second half when we come back right after the break. Oh, no break at all, Moses. I, I'm just lying. I'm just making stuff up. Don't you worry. are. Um, it's okay. Well, we can pivot. We can do an audible. Yeah? What uh, What do you want to do instead of a break? Um, We can just have a chat. 8-7. Actually, I didn't have nearly as much prepared as I thought I would. I thought something yeah. would come to me very quickly in the moment. This is where you need you know, all the preparation you do late at night, Moses, before uh, for a big A, you know. This is where the, you need to use it. That's the, the thing. I spent way too much time on actual... What, much of the trivia. Oh, you're going to yeah. try and make it seem like... Uh, <laughs> I see what you're doing. That's very <laughs> clever. I like that. On the actual team information, I didn't really create a fill topic card. Well, that's fine. It's a rookie mistake. It is a rookie mistake, but it's fine. Half time here. I mean, uh, a little bit of a chance for the teams to breathe, and um, obviously the piss around. I'm, I, I want them to buy a P250 for rain. Okay. That's my. Well, he, he yeah, he's had some uh, some really cool sequences in this. So why not give him give him the power weapon? Give him that raid boss buy. Are we still calling it a raid boss? Yeah, I think we are mixing World of Warcraft into uh, into Counter Strike. You know, I've never played World of Warcraft. That is, it is like a little bit weird, but I think it's a good thing. It might be, have been better for your life in some sense. Oh, well, it certainly, certainly was better for my life, but uh, yeah, haven't, haven't ever played World of Warcraft. It is uh, one have of you? the... Have you? Are you a World of Warcraft player? Yeah. Um, not in the way that most people did it, though. I was kind of... There's a weird story I here. took it to like the ultra nerd level. That okay. was the problem for me. What did you do? But, like My enjoyment no! for World of Warcraft, more or less, came from... Um, like manipulating the auction house for to you know so like buying other people's stuff reselling it to the auction house at a higher price making sure that i was the only seller of co copper it's my big thing you, uh, you were a copper salesman you yeah. had this entire fantasy world available to you of dragons elves orcs, yeah, and you were like that. i want to be a copper salesman yeah but here's the problem though i realized like this is then like the you know 
World of Warcraft, like vanilla version. Okay. Like towards the the end of it, you know, they had like all these bots playing the game. So yeah. Now you now you're actually competing. Like every time I spend an hour, there's like you know, like a hundred thousand Chinese bots that I'm fighting against. So I'm like, I'm really. I'm really devaluing my own time here. So you were one of the, the first victims of industrial automation. Yeah. Shout I out Yang Gang. Put me out of a... Yeah, exactly. That's, uh, yeah, it put me out of a job then. I was, um, <laughs> he took you out of your job as a World of Warcraft copper salesman. Listen, the, the biggest move I ever did on, in that line of business was all my friends migrated to another server. You could migrate your character, but only rarely. Okay. And I migrated mine, and I found out like what was the what was what was the difference in resource like value between the server that I was on and the other one. So I bought all the resources in my server and resold them on the new server to like a much higher profit margin. <laughs> well, you can see how this could. You, yes, I'm telling you, it's a different game for me. I just wanted to be rich in that's, World of Warcraft. That was my dream, Moses. You are an unbelievable creature. Every time I think that I've figured it all out, we've gone to a new depth. But, but why couldn't you just be like a like a orc shaman or whatever nerdy things they do in that game? Because that got outplayed quickly. That was the problem. Everyone was just playing the same build. I uh, see. I would have thought you would have gone like really hardcore, like method acting, and you would have actually become a goblin. You they, would have, you would have adopted the they personality. They had role-playing servers where you had to like play in your. That, that, Did you have to make a, like a creative voice? Because that's where I imagine you being. Probably, yeah. Okay. That might be that might be a thing. Maybe I, I might go back and do that. That sounds like fun. Yeah, it does. That's a wild night. That's a crazy, crazy Saturday evening. Back hey. to the Counter Strike. Yeah, we have to, don't we? We just re reminisce about the old days <laughs> a lot of the time. They uh, have bought a P250, they've not put it on rain, which is very displeasing to me. It's on Nico, so it's still pretty good. I, I'm not going to complain too much, but I'm just saying I would have preferred it on rain. 8 7 here at the beginning of the second half between FaZe and Cloud9. There's Mixwell taking down a Neo at a long range with that USB, and he's going to be happy with that. Backing off, saying that's absolutely fine. Now back towards the CT spawn. It's rain. Don't even need the P250. The Glock will do it, taking down Kusta. And then he's quickly dropped by Daps, so. Swift return from all of mice. They're still looking pretty good here with the bomb plant and a three on three. Olaf gonna get close up in towards jungle. Guardian and Nico waiting patiently for this retake to begin. There is a kit on Daps, but Automatic is still very far back. He's taking this slow about halfway through the bomb timer now. I'm gonna start pushing forward, but Olaf has the power position. <laughs> There's the B250. Nico just taking a quick peek out of apartments and shutting down Daps. Ten's gonna. Just tap the bomb, hoping to draw someone into the line of fire here. And actually, Guardian momentarily exposed from two angles, but that was the one opportunity they had, and they won't get a second one. Ooh. Nice backup shot there from uh, Automatic, but they're still going to lose the round, and that will give FaZe the beginning they were hoping for here at the second half. Yeah, that's exactly, <laughs> that is exactly what they needed. A good start, and actually, I mean, that actually even capitalized on some of the success they had at the, at the end. They, they won the final two rounds of the first half, so carrying over some of that momentum. And yeah, the, the, <laughs> the, the one down with the P250, that's like the shot that rings out, and if you're on Cloud9, you're just like, all right, well, we just lost. Yeah. That's the Like, one. you even, you can even hear that he didn't even click, like, a second time. He's just like... Just new. Goodbye. All tied up. 8-8, eight eight, couple deagles picked up on the CT side. Automatic has light armor as well. Some damage exchange, just a little bit. 10's down to 40 HP. Do you share this feeling that this is where FaZe just win the game? As in, they just, you know, go on like... wrap it up on this T side and yeah, just... Yeah, just a ridiculous win streak. And it's I, like, you just don't know what happened. In a way, I kind of hope so. Not not because I want to see Cloud9 get, like, demolished or anything like that, but I want to see the good... I want to see the good signs. But I'm ready to be a believer again, you know? I'm ready for that hope. Resubbed to the, yeah. to the whole thing. Exactly. I'll go for the premium package as well. If that gets me anything more. I have to be honest, I, you know... Well, they're not like you took away this part of your life, Moses, when Liquid started becoming good. Like you, you could have, you could live a life where you don't need this, you know. <laughs> just enjoy the Liquid victories. But now I like the stress. Yeah. yeah. Well, you might just get some. Let's see. <laughs> well, here's the thing as well. Like phase is phase is done after this, right? They're not going to Chicago. Yeah. This is their last event before the break, and then they have the major. So I'd like to see them go into the break with some positivity, <sighs> some kind of good performance here at Blast. That yeah, could, that can make them point. a little bit feel better about about the future, about going into the major. That is uh, actually a good point, isn't it? I like that attempt that I boost with the P250. That's fun. Nobody showed up, so we never really got to see it play out. And in fact, it turns out when they show up at the other angle, it's a terrible idea. But, you know, you can't really know that. Not at the time, no. 
Automatic. Waiting underneath the window, would love to... Oh, just misses his chance. Now they know where he is. The Deagle's out. Can't land that shot. Wants Rain to be the aggressor. Turns out, really, Counter-Strike would be just a different game if time was non-linear. So, you know, just saying. Also, much more confusing. How does it pass <laughs> as well? It's, uh... Oh, round number 18 here. Yeah, Olaf Meister with a couple of good kills. He was very quiet in the first half. But now he's sort of almost caught up to the rest of the team. He's really started to make up for it. That nine kills. Yeah. Had an increased performance. I think he was at, what, one kill in 10 rounds, I believe it was, in the first 10 rounds? Yes. So not, not shabby from him. Nico taking a lot of damage, and that Molotov is not as effective as you'd like it to be. Rain also. The, the, that was two people just almost dying through the smoke for really no, no reward at all. Like, no benefit. No, I can't see what those Molotovs would have done. Either way, that's, uh, this is a rough one to recover from if you're on the phase side of things. Rain 7 HP, he'll have to play back. You'd like to give him an AK-47 for the one-tap potential at range, but you, you have to really use those weapons to get into the bomb site as well. Kusta holding the off angle. Mixwell is here with him also. This is where you actually want the power of that phase lineup to, to have one of these players just sort of, you know, come in and get three kills for no reason. That used to be sort of a feature of it. Not sure if it is anymore. Olofmeister, though, making a pretty good case for it, getting two and dropping Kuster and Mixwell. Now tense. Could have maybe got that kill. Very low up in the apartments on Neo, but he's going to be falling back. That cannot be a thing on defense. You have a, a five on four. No one even gets any production out of your defense. Just doesn't even create any damage. That's a disaster, and now FaZe can actually steal this away. Olaf not able to transfer over, oh. but it's a bait and switch. They yeah. want to leave Guardian here. Yeah, that's intentionally Olaf Meister sacrificing himself, saying, you just go for it, and they're not going to guess there's a second player here. Now they know, but that might almost be too late. They're in the corner, though. No one can actually stop this defuse. They have to run all the way out. This is a big problem. A couple of seconds left now, Neo. What is he going to do? There's no chance. They're going to go for the full defuse all the way inside. That, that round could have worked out perfectly if not for the fact that the bomb is planted in that position actually it still it still should have worked out that should have been perfect guardian gets that kill and just goes back and hide that's the winning play right there and i think he just gets caught in that follow-up fight after this but it, i mean great call from olaf this one don't need to take that fight just hide it's hard it's so hard in that situation to stop yourself but if yeah. he just crouches takes his hand off the, the mouse they win the round yeah i have to agree and even at the end, like one smoke, one, oh sorry, one HE, one Molotov or anything. Oh no, that was very awkward. Mixwell, somehow living through that. Instead, it's rain and tends to be traded in the middle. That looked very weird. Did he collide with the smoke grenade? Was that why he got stuck? I'm not sure. Very possible. I didn't quite see it as close as I would have liked. Kusta gonna start clearing out a ramp. So he'll have an early flank that's going to allow Mixwell to, to just kind of rotate away and, and kind of play how he would like to. Daps as well pushed up in B-Hall, so actually Conan has some great early warning to... Oh, Daps turned back just a little early. He somehow wins the fight anyways. Full blind, Olaf goes down, and Automatic is now here to help him out. Cat Control goes to phase in a three on four, but it's going to be a long route to the bomb site. Really well done on Daps. Almost walked into the line of fire there for Guardian and... Most people just don't come out alive against that. Waiting back here and probably wishing that he would have seen someone by now. 45 seconds on the clock. Kusa still on the other side, so they're not scared about having this be tilted defense. No, I mean, they would actually be fine with if, if the A-bomb set was lost because of Kusa's position, but now they know. Automatic calls it out. Daps is still waiting, and Mixwell's here already. Kusta making the rotation as well pretty quickly here at 30 seconds and Nico snuck in far on the bomb site and somehow gets the double kill, cleaning it all up. Now 20 seconds, they're gonna smoke this one off. I feel like Cloud9 could have been in the position. Now they're gonna go back and pick up the bomb. Oh no, how is it lost back there? And that's the MP9 taking down Nico. How has this happened? Do they just do they just forget about it? They just never picked it up? Yeah. They just never picked it up. Oh, that one hurts. That's a kick in the balls. Yeah, just laughing, laughing at him. Yeah. Big swell, of course. Time for Yango to get the belt out. That was, <laughs> that was rough. How do you, I don't, that doesn't even make sense. Like, did someone drop it trying to get a pick? There's, yeah, it's dropped by Guardian going down. Okay, okay, so that's fair play. If it's because if it was on Guardian, it went down. I thought they just literally forgot about it for some reason. Yeah, but still that can't feel good, can it? No, no, it doesn't help much, but 
It happens. At least it's like, at least it's just because of a frag and it's not like some mental lapse of, of judgment or something along those lines. Ten's waiting behind the smoke. Mid control to phase, but they only have the pistols. They only have uh, the one deagle on Nico and all P250s, no utility. So it should be a relatively easy mop up for Cloud9. And again, just much like the first map they played earlier against MIBR on, on Mirage, is somehow on their CT side, there's like a stretch where they're just able to gain control. If they can build up this economy, this is where they stop the Brazilians. As soon as they got control of their money, they went on a huge tear. I feel like we're overdue like a good Nico Deagle highlight, you know? It's been a long time, I feel, since his last one. It's just been a little bit too long. This one wasn't going to be it. The smoke fading right behind him, so um, that was unfortunate. Automatic doing a fine job, and the boost does absolutely nothing here. So Cloud9 now really surprising us a little bit. Up 11 to 9, leading two against FaZe, and it's really starting to look uh, like things are moving in the right direction. Top of the scoreboard, Automatic at 13. F 15 on Nico on the other team. But nobody really running away with the game. No, everyone, everyone's pretty close. This has been pretty standard. And it, I mean, it's been like that. I think the biggest lead was by five rounds. That was from phase at the start, but we've never really strayed too far away from a, from a close game. So 11-9 as uh, the teams talk some things over for the later stages of this map. A couple, a couple of creeks here and some AK-47s. It's weird. I, I really feel like, especially with whenever FaZe are playing, there's usually somebody who's up at, like, you know, like 110 ADR and just like, it's so, it's sort of, you know, a little bit average all across the board. That, that doesn't have to reflect anything bad. I mean, it's fine if everybody's having like a, a, a fair good, level like, of production, you know? Yeah, like a, just a good game. Yeah, good but... Solid performance. Well, you just feel like with the names on that team, someone should have 25 kills at all times. Yes, I think that's probably it. Daps over at the B-bomb site to defend over at Van. No ADPs in play from either team. Money not quite situated for Cloud9 that they don't really, uh, they feel they don't need it on the defense quite yet or just simply can't bring it out. Neo and Rain just kind of checking out on the pass. They don't have any back up from top mid if they want to peek out there. So I would say that that's kind of risky, but they are still taking a peek in and it looks like they're going to be trying to boost up in the window. And if they can get away with that, that would be big news. All of Meister's going to be going down, but they did take down Mixwell on the other side. And that is such an amazing position to be in if you're Rain. No, but look at the, yeah, look at the rest of the map. I was going to say all the positioning is in the favor of FaZe. What a weird... How do you read what's coming? If you're Kusta or Tens, you just have no clue at any point where they could be. They could already be encroaching upon the A bomb site. Kusta not able to get any information as Nico just started walking in Palace. It's Daps who's got to provide the intel off catwalk. He needs to peek and see something and at least say it, it looks like they're heading towards A. That'd be a huge kill to get. I meant for Daps, but it's still pretty huge for Neo as well. And the follow up from Guardian, that's that's a thing of beauty. And they, I mean, they almost had to take some of these risks on the Cloud9 side. Like you said, they just don't know what's coming. They, they have no idea where everybody is, so... Look at the time, though. Kusa can actually stop the bomb. It's on oh, Guardian. No, no you're absolutely right. He's thinking about it, listening as they do make their way in front. A bomb right there, and it goes down with seven seconds left. And now it's just a question. Can he stop them? They're on the other side of the box now, and they will get the bomb plant down. Kusta in a one versus two, and he's already done a fair bit of damage to Rain. Now up on top of the box, he's got the right angle and the right idea. Got to be careful about the bullets left here. Needs that reload at some point, or it's going to get really, really weird. Now down to three bullets left. I'm wondering if he even knows that. And the bomb is ticking away on the other side. They are not going to try and peek him very much more. There's no real reason to either. And he's going to have to back on out a little bit here. This is a, this was a really, really big chance, but going to be slipping through his fingers at the end here, I believe. And he might not know how low rain is either. No, he doesn't, but he was looking for that mistake. It's too hard of a run to get to the bomb site. It's kind of his idea. If they have that crossfire set up, you could tell the way it was being played. That you know, it was going to be played to perfection. He was going to have to really, really overextend for that and just never found the time for the reload to make it happen. So nice, clean clutch for Cloud9. Costly win for FaZe, or I mean, excuse me, nice, nice round from FaZe, but it was very, very costly for them. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, it was. Uh, even losing the last kill there to Kusta. So, yeah, this just, you get a kill like that at eight seconds, that seems like a round win, you know? But, um... I'm surprised he wasn't a little bit more aggressive after the fact. 
didn't obviously didn't want to get killed or anything like that, but you know, you have that low of time, a little bit more pressure applied. Nico just barely got that down. If he'd even occupied him for like a half second, it might have been not possible. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Easy it, to criticize afterwards, though. Yeah, it is. It's one of the great, great joys, great delights of... Uh, Probably my favorite part about this job. Yeah, just second-guessing people when you know the outcome. <laughs> it's like watching the lotteries, uh, like, you know, afterwards and saying, I would have picked those numbers. Yeah, you idiot. You should have picked 17. <laughs> 10 to 11. So we move into the 22nd round. Rifles all across the border, though. You could definitely tell here for FaZe that losing that round did have a bit of an impact on them. There's a UMP in play, limited on the grenades. No head armor on Nico. Still trying to make it work. Rushing right into the AWP of Mixwell. And the follow-up there. Oh, a great grenade from Neo. I'm not sure it's going to be enough. He does get the kill with the Galil, too. Trying to keep them in this round. Uh, must be Guardian with the Krieg, but they're not looking towards CG spawn. There's no smoke there, and somehow it takes Daps a minute to get the kill, but he does eventually find it. Nice work from Tens as well on the stairs. 12 to 10, a two-round lead. That's actually huge. So they lose a round, but it's only one person living for phase, and then they win the follow-up. Yeah, and there's that's no crushing. plan. Yeah, there's no money on the phase side. That, that could bring them pretty close to winning the map. Have you ever seen anything like it? Four of the last five to Cloud9. They're doing a great job. They, were, like, they said they wanted to be competitive. I mean, they, they have been. This would, be, this would be the next step further. Yeah, they're going above and beyond right now. It would be, again, like, whenever we see these, these projects that involve bringing, you know, sort of international talent into, into any kind of a lineup, it always makes you think, like, if that works, then, again, it opens so many opportunities for, for a bunch of different players that are out there. Well, I mean, that's what Daps has been doing for, for some time now. I mean, yeah. He's one of the original guys who kind of you took, the, took the chance to bring Mixwell over. Same with Cirque. So, I mean, that's one of, like, the qualities that Daps has in in-game that's pretty underrated is his willingness to try out new talent, to scout new talent, and he's, he's picked some, some great winners. Probably, obviously, with the help of, of you know, in the, the rise and advent of things like, you know, Rank S and FPL, you get a little bit more of a stage to kind of witness some talent and research him more specifically, but Taps has done a great job where, where other people really haven't even gotten into the same game that he's playing. Yeah, I think that's a great point, and I think it's, um, you know, hopefully something we'll see a little bit more of in the future. We have all clocks in play for phase. It's hard to make that, you know, very action-packed. Can't imagine that they're going to be doing a lot. No, you can't really hype up a Glock round, can you? Well, you might be able to find a way. Maybe if, they, if there's burst fire involved. Ooh, a run boost. We do like run boost. Didn't get one here, but that's one way to hype them up. Yeah, run boost, burst fire. Tasers. Yeah, tasers too. That, does that count as a Glock round? I think it should. You could you could buy a taser and a clock, and that's fine. It'll still work. Still have had no taser run boosts. Much requested. <laughs> We're getting there. Listen, we just the, the meta hasn't evolved to the point where that's a thought in people's heads. But right, I'll make sure everyone credits me with that idea when it happens. Oh yeah, you're gonna steal that away. That would really be something. <laughs> Thirteen to ten in the favor of Cloud Nine. Tied their last match against MIBR on this map. Would love to come away with a victory. Oh, look at the nade damage. So much damage early on. And that's a smart call from Automatic. He really wanted to take that fight, and he just realized he lost the angle. The jiggle peak, the timing wasn't there in his favor. And just instead of risking it and trying to peek back in, just, just give it up. Live to fight another day. Look at how interesting this is between Tens and Automatic. I mean, it is a risk having two people play this position, but on the other hand, if they go and check it and they find one of them, they're, they're not going to be looking for a second one. There's just no way. So maybe that could work out. It looks like Automatic kind of wants to sneak past the smoke up here, but I don't know. I would have loved to seen that mind game play out if uh, FaZe were there early on. Well, no, no connector control here. So that means Rain has taken a position. That's... Yeah, really he, good. He, was, he becomes the pivot point. This is almost like an old school idea of, of, of Mirage. Just get someone up in connector or window room and you have that, that location in the middle of the map secured. And now you can hit either one of the bomb sites. And that player, Rain, he just pretty much plays off his own tuition. Where does he want to pounce? Does he stop someone from rotating? Does he stop someone running out of the bomb site? Does he get aggressive and go for a flank? 
We'll see, but this is still going to be a pretty tough defense at the B bomb site because tens can come off catwalk and they can effectively have three people and they're even boosting one up in the site. This can delay things. Daps is in such a powerful spot. See what happens now. 25 seconds, trying to see if they can push in. There's automatic getting the kill on Nico and the bomb dropped and there's absolutely no entry here. You are right, that B defense really holding up. And Rain, his position was really contingent on the fact that that B hit was successful and then he could play after the fact and that never happened. So that's a flawless round out of Cloud9. 14 to 10 and money again broken here for FaZe. Oh dear, this is... It's not looking good. Starting to be really uncomfortable. No, this is a great lead for Cloud9. They've got plenty of money to back this up as well. They can sustain some losses if it comes to that. You can see all three members of that B defense getting, you know, getting some frags. I think it was automatic with two. Daps had one, Tens had one from Catwalk as well, a three-man stack. That is a, a really cool defense to rotate into. Now with just pistols, FaZe need to get something done. A plant would be magnificent. They need the money. They actually desperately need the money. That $800 bonus is, uh, is going to make a real difference here. I think what was it on the last map? It was Cloud9 had a 15 to 11 lead. Did they let slip away from them against MIBR? This would be one better. This would be 15 10 if they can close this out, if they can survive this round of the pistols. Here he comes. Here's the set piece. Molotov smokes. Flashbang's over for the offensive side. Ten's looking for the timing, and he's just going to spam through. Almost gets the shot he wanted. Oh, there's your there's your Nico Deagle highlight. He just eliminates Kusta. Yeah, that's the beginning, right? But now we just need like two or three more in a row here. That's that's what we're all hoping for. Blind shots through. The flashbang is so good on the other side, and it's Rain with the CC coming through the kill on Tense. This is working out so much better than he would have expected for phase at the moment, and they must be loving it. If they could not even just get the bomb plant, but steal this round away. That would actually be kind of devastating. They're backing up already. Yeah, they've already taken the round. That is beautiful shots from FaZe Clan. Kusa just getting dropped immediately. Tens trying to spam through the smoke. There were a couple opportunities for Tens, especially to get a few kills oh. to actually capitalize on that. Ooh, weird timing. And Nico, what? did he forget to reload? More reload fun. We really do need to start making blooper reels. Yeah, that would be the, the thing, wouldn't it? Maybe, maybe if we do that, Here's a thought. Uh, maybe we could hire Bob Saget. What's he doing these days? He's not doing anything, is he? No, I think he probably made bank on How I Met Your Mother, and he's just calling it, calling it a day. Yeah, but get him in here. Like, you know, people can send in their, their clips, their blooper clips. We've got like a, you know, like a, you know. Oh, because of America's Funny Some Videos. Yeah. Right. I, I might have just revealed how old I am, but. Well, yeah. listen, I watched that. I love that show. That I great. just entirely forgot. I always think of Bob Saget, I think of his stand-up, which is vastly different from his, uh, it is <laughs> definitely different. But um, yeah, no, no, I was, I was thinking about that, you know. We're bringing the families, the, you know, the, the people in the audience, bring up the clips. Them do bring it. the players up, be like, what, yeah, yeah. what were you thinking when you did this very, very stupid play? Yeah, exactly. I think we did. Maybe we get like a, there must be like a Bob Saget impersonator out there. Maybe we get him. I'm sure, the I'm sure if there was one, he'd be somewhere here in L.A. That's actually a really good point, isn't it? We'll, fi we'll find one, we'll find one. Well, here we go, round number 26, and FaZe, in sort of an unbelievable fashion, stealing away that last round. Cloud9 defense on the A-bomb side, not holding at all. And obviously, great opening from Nico. The Deagle rain with the follow-up. Uh, CC kill through the smoke, or running through the smoke. And that has actually given them a kind of a strange chance to bring it right back. There's the money on Cloud9 locked looking great right now. FaZe could definitely do a lot. And you're hoping Cloud9 can just shake off that feeling of deja vu. They had a similar lead in the previous map that ended in a draw. They would have loved to have closed that out. Four chances for him. This would be huge. Tens misses the opportunity, but Automatic is there. Trust the Automatic with a double kill. Keep things in Cloud9's favor. And it's Kusta. I don't even think they saw him. That's just a no. shot through the smoke from Guardian. Again, FaZe just not caring about the smokes in these choke points. I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that, but somehow Guardian just makes the void. Now they're all in the corner, and I'm not sure I'm liking that yet for FaZe. Somebody has to get out Guardian with one more headshot. Now Daps lining up for it, but Guardian will find another one and close around with a quad kill. That is beautiful. He didn't even take a single point of damage. That is kind of outrageous. Oh, uh, Kusa is going to be so upset that he just, he wasn't even able to get involved in the action. Just dropped immediately when Guardian turns the corner. This is a great return for Automatic. I want to see this one from Guardian, so we don't get to see that. Regardless, a very, a very good round from Guardian with the Krieg. 
Now he's got the AWP, he's one, one upped it, and it's 14-12, and Cloud9 feels one more slipping away. They've gone for a full investment in this round, and I don't think you can blame them. This is a strong enough buy to, to really be, can't criticize it too much, but if they lose this, Sanders, out of money at 14-13, you're, you're not going to feel good. You know what, maybe this is, uh, you know, down the stretch, maybe this is a good thing for Cloud9. Maybe this is where they learn as a team, like, you know what, got like a little bit of weakness here. Something, something that needs to be looked at. Not being able to win matches? Yeah. Okay. You want to find out early, right? <laughs> we really have to work on winning. Yeah, like, we're up, don't get nervous. Like, it's fine, just enjoy the fact that we're ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'm making a joke out of it, but there is, there is that factor of being able to actually close out games that, that is a tough thing for, for some teams to have learned. It's been a problem for a bunch of people, haven't it, in the past, like... Astralis, Liquid. Yeah. yeah it seems like it's a, it's a thing you have to go through, you know? It's a transitional phase, really. It's like, yeah. kind of a sad way to have to learn those lessons. Uh, it's probably not fun while you're doing it, but no. um, especially not right now for Cloud9. I mean, they could, again, they could have could have had the win against MIBR, could have already probably won this game. That would certainly be something if you, if you open open the whole show here at the, in LA with a, with a two wins against those teams. Well, now, everyone just playing back. No one making any moves whatsoever. Utility running low on the Cloud9 side. Phase still has everything they could possibly want. They've just been waiting for some kind of a push, some kind of aggression that's not coming. Even Mixwell with his AWP is pretty passive. I think Daps is still going to be the hero in this round, isn't he? I would have liked to have seen them just send 10s forward with just a deal into, the, into Palace. If you're going to be playing this sneaky position in the corner, why don't you buy the MP5 at least? You know, get the silence. Uh, like, role play that position a little bit more. Back to the role playing. Says the copper farmer. You yeah. big into role playing. I forgot some of the stories I've heard about you. <laughs> Rain gonna lead the way up connector. Oh, a good shot from Kusa. Holding him back for the moment. The footsteps surely have they been given up. Nico finds oh. a kill and Olaf isn't even gonna look to his left. He'd have a free kill if he just turned around. He wants to go towards spawn. And now surely tens, daps, they have to pounce. This has to be the moment. Daps has the first and oh, he cannot get the second one. No, but I do think it's fine anyway. It's a one versus three and Nico. Way out in the open, running out of time and health and teammates, and that will be 15 to 12 phase now, right at the edge. And I mean, yeah, just normally you would say, because they're playing so far back, that's going to give phase all the map control to execute on, but somehow they still left it to 20 seconds. And that play from Daps right there, waiting all along. Yeah, well, I mean, it worked out perfectly, right? They didn't clear. That's like the third time in this half that that position has actually ruined FaZe's day. They need yeah. to start clearing it no matter what. Kusta had a double kill from there earlier that really stopped them. Daps had a heroic round from there earlier, and he just does it one more time. Yeah, maybe, maybe you, like, maybe you have a checklist you run through. Someone reading it out loud on a piece of paper as you're going through the bomb site. Cruz is in for some trouble. Ooh. Smoke helps him out. Oh, that's a big save from Tens. Rain was trying to keep him pinned down, and now Kusta, he can jump up whatever he wants. And that was over from Connector. That was actually, that was a huge kill for Tens. Now Mixwell is there to take down Guardian. The bomb is down, sure, but it's a five on three. And they have really no grenades left here on the phase plan side. They're moving Nico into the middle, but all he has is UMP. I'm not really sure about how that play is going to be working out. Automatic is kind of looking for it as well. And it takes a lot to fool him. Now they're all moving up. Nico, yeah, he's getting close in behind them, but again with the UMP, and they're so ready for it. Kusta goes down, but that's going to be it. He is 16 on the board for Cloud9 as they take down FaZe on Mirage. Not many people would have seen that coming.